So now we are going to talk about entropy balance. So if I said, give me an entropy balance for this combustion chamber, you'd sit there and you say, okay, here's my combustion chamber. I'm bringing in a bunch of reactants. I'm taking out a bunch of products, true? I like to work on a molar basis, so the molar flow rate of the reactants, N dot, of each of the reactants coming in, fuel, air, nitrogen, and I go out with the molar flow rate of the products. Wow, if I could just get the entropy on a molar basis for each of those reactants, and that would be a function of the temperature of the reactants and the partial pressure of each of those reactants, as well as this as a function of temperature of the products, the partial pressure of the products. Wow, I'd have this problem solved because that's the hard part, getting this, this uh, how the entropy flows with the mass or the moles, molar flow rates of the entropy with the reactants and the products coming in. If there's a heat transfer across the boundary temperature Tb, well, we learned from thermo 1, it's Q dot over Tb. So Q dot divided by Tb is a rate of entropy transfer coming in with the heat transfer. And we have sigma dot rate of entropy generation or production due to any irreversibilities. So there is our entropy balance at steady state. So no, put that left hand side zero. I like to read it like this. This is an N. This is an N. This is really an N. And this is your only out, and the out has the only negative sign in front of it. Now, how do I calculate this molar entropy? Well, we did it before. For each species I, it's a function of temperature and pressure. And that pressure is the pressure of the gas times the molar uh, mole fraction, or Y, of that mixture. Right. So I'll have to know the Ys of all of the products, and I'll have to know the Ys of all of the reactants to get their partial pressures. And now this is a, um, let me do this. And they normalize it by the reference pressure. Our reference pressure is going to be 1 atm. It's 1 atm for all the gases. Okay. This is R bar, we understand that with the minus sign. What is this term right here? Well, it's the entropy is a function of temperature only. This is our temperature contribution. This was our pressure contribution to the total molar entropy of each species. So it's only a function of temperature. I see there's a bar on top. It's on a molar basis. I see there's a knot right there. So it's, it's for this component. And what's that knot imply? Standard pressure, which is 1 atm. So that's that 1 atm for our reference pressure. This is the absolute entropy. Okay, Where do we find this one? They have put this in a nice table for us, this absolute entropy at that reference condition. So if we go back to, to right here, this table, what is it? What is this com column now? It's our absolute entropy. It's S bar naught. It's at 298 and 1 atm. For what? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. They have them all there. So somebody did a lot of work to put every, all these players on a common uh, reference for entropy calculations. This is the bind that, that binds everything together. This column like this. So take a look at a little discussion. They'll say, they'll say that uh, they've introduced this concept of absolute entropy. And you have low values of absolute entropy, and the lowest of the low is zero. You can never have a negative absolute entropy. And so they defined it kind of theoretically pushing or extrapolating out to be for a pure crystalline structure or substance. Crystalline versus amorphous. Remember that? Amorphous, kind of random, mixed up, solid st structure. Crystalline. Oh, it's just right above, right up. Everybody's to the side. Everybody knows where their neighbors are. True? It's like, if you're here, you go up, you go this way, that way. It's a crystalline, well-organized structure. There's no randomness 
or uncertainty in where your neighbors are or where you are. And at what temperature? Zero Kelvin. Absolute zero temperature. There's no molecular motion or vibration at zero Kelvin. Do we ever get to zero Kelvin? No. They get to 0. 0.00001 Kelvin. And they get the point, oh, 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 you know, they play around getting colder and colder and colder because very funny things happen to real materials at zero Kelvin or close to zero Kelvin, but like they become superconducting, some of them. But anyway, so this is now uh, a, the introduction of the, the absolute entropy. And they said this is the third law. So the third law of thermodynamics says absolute entropy is zero for a pure crystalline structure at absolute temperature of zero Kelvin. Notice that this table A25, which had a column for the absolute entropies at this temperature and this pressure, is consistent with table A23 in the textbook dealing with ideal gas properties of selected gases. Let's take a look. Here's oxygen, true? What is its absolute entropy at 298? Come down here into this other table, find oxygen, find absolute entropy at a temperature of 298, and guess what? Thankfully, they're consistent because it is the absolute entropy that's reported in table A23. Take a look at another one, carbon monoxide, okay, CO gas, one nine, here's carbon monoxide, so they link together, it's good, okay, so, so it is absolute entropy and absolute entropy in these tables.